koinonia, a place of encounter with the Holy Spirit, and transformation by the principles of God's kingdom. Praise the Lord. Let's hold our hands together and just pray in the Spirit. A minute or two, just make contact with someone by your left and right. Let's bless him in the spirit. Shaba la kosa da badi. Shaba la kosa da badi. Shapo to suba la bashara. Pray in the spirit for one minute. Call upon the God of heaven. Even tonight. Ota salabrande ge de bala koshara brakastele. Then the presence says we are shalabarados. Ota bala dosa digalaba. Shabalakata barados. Embraku salabaruta shalabra di gede balarabo. Siku harush halabata kata bana gada balarabo. Shada balaraba shata brada gada. Anda balaraba rokos koto brada shalabra. Embuta shalabara daba gado. Kuharuna shata di gede balarabo balarabo. Spirit of the living God, I have come. Open my eyes and empower me afresh. Lift your voice and cry. Let it be a cry of desperation. I have come. Open my eyes and empower me. Open my eyes and embrace me. Open my eyes. Just want us to take a minute or two and thank God from the depth of our hearts. Hold on, hold on. It is. It says it's a good thing to give thanks to the Lord. That means it's a bad thing to be ungrateful. The mighty, you know, because of what God continues to do in this ministry, sometimes we can be caught up with this sense of familiarity. Yes, we know He's mighty. He's God. We know he turned someone's life around. It's God. But I want us to take our time and acknowledge him just in one or two minutes. Lord, we are not confused about the doer. And we are not ashamed to declare that without you, there is nothing that can be done. The Bible says, without him was not anything made that was made. Is someone being grateful tonight? I look at my life, oh God, and I see the transitions, a testament of your grace. Thank you, 
Look what you've done, O oh God, with my life. Are you praying? You've turned my life around. You have caused me to be the head and not the tail. You have put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. The Bible says many will see and fear and put their trust in Him. You have turned my mourning into dancing, my sorrow into joy. You've taken away fears, you've taken away sorrow. Lord, we thank you as individuals and as a family that you have so helped. We come before you tonight with hearts full of thanksgiving. Thank you for the miracles. Thank you for the testimonies. Thank you for breakthroughs. Thank you for illumination. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for impartations, for liftings. Hallelujah. Father, tonight, I stand on behalf of your precious people. And together we declare that we are grateful. Indeed, you are a good God. You have shown us your mercy. You have shown us your faithfulness. You have shown us your grace. We are recipients of your kindness. And Lord, we are not careful to say thank you tonight for the many things you have done in and through our lives. We owe you our lives. We owe you thanks. And so Father, we pray from grateful hearts that you accept this gratitude. Let creation know that you are the God behind every result. Let the nations know that these are not the doings of men. Only God can do these things. And so we return thanks. We return thanks. And Lord, we pray, let it please you to continue doing wonders in this place. Indeed, you are the God that doeth wonders. Continue to open our eyes. Continue to embrace us with levels and dimensions of the Spirit that will dumbfound principalities and powers. We thank you even for tonight. Thank you for encounters. Thank you for transformation. Thank you for light. Thank you for empowerment. Thank you for results. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Good evening, everyone. Um, I really want to appreciate everyone, particularly um, those who are coming here for the first time and the many who are following us online. It's always a joy to <clears throat> converge like this. It's a time of learning. It's a time of growing. I made a vow and I made a covenant with my life and my destiny that I will never stop learning. Never stop learning. For as long as I am alive and for as long as there's breath in my nostril, I will never stop learning. I acknowledge that there are many things I do not know. And so while we celebrate the ones we know, we continue to contend for the ones we do not know. When you become satisfied with where you are, then you have placed a peg on your growth. That means that you are telling God, there is no need to take me higher than this. And because God gave man a will, he will honor you. Praise the Lord. There has to be a hunger. A hunger that while it is being filled, another one is created. And you continue to rise from glory to glory. From glory to glory. Let me encourage us again to 
continue to be very open and receptive to the word of God. No man can be helped. Listen to me. No man can be helped who hates or ignores the word of God. The moment you ignore the word of God, you have ignored the creative dimension of God. And that means nothing will ever be made in your life. Praise the Lord. It is the word that makes men. I commend you to the word of his grace that is able to build you up and then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. When we gather like this, week in, week out, it is always an encounter with the word of God which contains a revelation of the ways of God. Micah chapter 4. When you read from verse 2 and 3, the Bible says that when the mountain of the Lord has been exalted, all the nations shall flow to it. They shall say, come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of Jacob. Give us Micah chapter 4, please. He says, and he will teach us his ways. We are not there just for entertainment. He will teach us his ways. And then when we know his ways, we will walk in his paths. He will teach us his ways. So one of the primary tools for transforming the saints is the teaching ministry. What does it mean to teach? To bring to comprehension. To open your mind to understand the dynamics of an operation. Not just the awareness that it exists, but how it works. The greatest blessing you can have, um, maybe second to your salvation experience, is the opportunity to belong to a spiritual family where there is an accurate communication of the ways of God. That means that if you continue to submit to the truths that you hear, you are not the one who will lift yourself. The truths were designed to lift you. When you receive them and they become life, let me tell you, it may take time, but inevitably, your life will be turned into a sign and a wonder. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So my excitement every time we come here, is not just because um, we're coming to fellowship, as important as that is, but that every time we come under this grace, there will be an unfolding of a dimension. Let me tell you this. You will be in great deception to believe that there is nothing else to learn and there is nothing else to study. It's a joke. Compared to the dimensions we need to get to, we are only a step out of the cave. There are so many things that we need to learn that make for victory. And then there are many things that we have known but have not become spirit and life. And so there has to be a system of reiteration and emphasis, right? So that if you did not get it before, you can get it now. Honestly, God sees my heart that my prayer all the time is that you understand these things that I teach and you pay attention to them and watch the lifting power of light Forget about darkness. Just focus on that light. He says that was the true light that lighted every man. There is a false light, religion. There is a false light, the doctrine of men. There is a false light, the perspective of men that comes from their pride. But there is the true light. And that light can light every man, not men of God. The light lightens every man. And he says you cannot light a candle and put it under a bushel. If the candle is not lit, you can hide it somewhere. But the moment there is light upon that candle, you cannot hide it. And he will teach us his ways. Every week the Lord continues to clear confusion from our lives and our destinies. He continues to bring color to your life. He continues to, by his word, give you a chance to life. 
so that what I could not, the privileges that I could not walk in, either by reason of yesterday or by reason of my background or the limitations of my territory, it is remedied when we feast upon the revelation of God's word. We begin to learn his ways. You are not growing if what made you afraid yesterday still makes you afraid today. It means you are not growing. There is no light. The Lord is my light and salvation. Of whom shall I fear? Hallelujah. Many times you will almost be pressured to doubt what you believe and doubt what you receive. Why? Because sometimes, many times, in fact most times, it takes a while before the word of God um, would manifest physically into the results that we desire. And that gap, Satan is a master at taking advantage of that gap to make you think that the word of God is unfruitful. Are we together? And so you have to trust the integrity of God first that whether or not you have any physical evidence that shows that what you hold is true trust the integrity of god the word of god has been proven again and again and has been found to be faithful when you find yourself doubting the word of god is an attack forever O oh lord thy word is settled hallelujah praise god and so i came tonight to really really first encourage us i'm afraid for any believer that does not have an intentional value for the word of god that believer is not only a dangerous person to himself he is going to be dangerous to others your security in this kingdom is your understanding of the word of god your security in this kingdom your immunity in this kingdom is the fortification that knowledge provides we must continually be passionate to know and to see not just to be aware of the realities that exist in the kingdom but to see to understand the dynamics of their operation with time i can know what you have believed by the results that show let me tell you this results in the long run do not lie Results may not be a good basis for gauging your progress in the short term. Why? Because certain things will take time to prevail. But in the long run, when life gives you an appreciable period of time and the requisite level of results are not produced, then you do not have any excuse. Are we together? Just because Jesus did not come back to life day one, you would be too fast on him to feel that he was not the resurrection and the life. So be patient. If Jesus had not resurrected after one week, we'll be in trouble because or we know that something is wrong. Destroy this temple and I will build it in three days. One week may be too long. One day may be too short. So somehow find consolation in the fact that even if my life is not producing certain results, I will be patient, patient, patient. But then if after a long period of time my life also refuses to produce that result, go back and check what could be wrong. Hallelujah. If at all I have any fear in my life, it is this. I never want to hold on to something that after many years I will find out I was holding on to a lie. If at all I have any fear, it is this one thing. To hold on to something that I think is light and then after so many years discover that I've held on to shadows, rubbish and nonsense. The Bible says to be careful lest what you call light be darkness why because there is a way that seemeth right unto a man and the end thereof are the ways of death it's like students writing an exam everybody is boldly writing something on that paper 
But the lecturer is the one who is going to mark. And he knows exactly what he's looking for. There are few people who will come out of an exam hall and start crying and say, I failed. Usually people will come out and with boldness and confidence. Some will say, this is a piece of cake. And so we all wait. Not for the students. Not for their pride. Not even for their fear. We wait for the lecturer. When the results are pasted, sometimes you will see someone who was quiet, didn't see anything. You would think he was afraid. And then you will come and see that that person cleared everything. And then you will find a loud noisemaker shouting around, making all kinds of claims. And not only will his results be written there, they will write, see me. That means your, your issue. Yes. Are we together? Continue to vet your revelation. Listen, there is no revelation in the body of Christ today that is too big to be cross-checked. No revelation. I don't care from who and for how long. Every revelation, if it is of God, there should be no fear in vetting it. Because it should be consistent. Find out what you believe to know whether this is true or it's a lie. Don't run with lies. And after many years, you find out that you have wasted your time. Build a church on nonsense. Build a ministry on nonsense. Build your own life on nonsense. It is because of this he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for the equipping, not discussing, equipping of the saints. What does it mean to equip? To bring to your life the tools needed for the work. Equip comes from the word equipment. Is that true? You equip me when you supply the tools needed for the work. If I'm in the farm and you bring me syringe, are we together? And you bring me bandage, you did not equip me. You brought equipment but not for the work. What will I do with a syringe in a farm? What will I do with a bandage in a farm? So to be, to be equipped does not mean to coordinate any information to me. No, 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 no. I must see where you are going first. And then by the intelligence of the spirit to know what will be needed for this journey. Hallelujah. When we get to the farm and they say, everybody bring out your tools. Some will bring seeds. Some will bring their hoe. And then someone will bring a hammer. He will bring a syringe. Both of them are not equipped for that good work. So the Bible says to equip the saints so that the saints now being equipped will do the work of the ministry. It's one of the things we continue to do here that you are equipped. By the Spirit of God, He grants us access to the blueprint. What are we becoming? What is the demand that will be placed on us? And when you know it, He begins to supply the various equipments. You will need favor here. Keep it. You will need the mercy of God here. Keep it. You will need speed here. Keep it. You will need to know how to engage warfare. Add it here. You will need to understand your identity in Christ. Keep it here. Are you seeing the, the tools now? Yes. You will need to understand men. Keep it here. You will need to understand the realm of the spirit and how it operates. Keep it here. When you have those things, like a toolbox, it says go. You will continue to receive other tools, but go. So when you stand and there is a door, the Holy Spirit who is guiding you, will say, where is that hammer that I gave you before? Bring it out. He has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron inside you get to a place and there is a door. Where is that key that I gave you? You pick it and you open that door. Are we together? Yes. When you do not excel 
it is because you probably do not have the tools or you do not know how to use the tools effectively praise the lord our military people continue to write that the federal government supplies more equipment they have the know-how but the equipment the equipment the equipment we need to be equipped with the tools that will make for practical victory and for as long as you continue to remain interested god is never weary to supply these things please listen to me do not stop learning do not stop passionately pursuing the knowledge of the ways of god this is your victory that knowledge that light that understanding hallelujah praise the lord what i want to share with us tonight is very powerful will be very fast and um, the lord himself will open our eyes and grant us understanding teach us to pray part one teach us to pray we'll be examining a bit about the prayer ministry of the saints and the spiritual dynamics that make for effective prayer we are exploring by the spirit of god why the prayer life of many people continues to be full of activities but with very little spiritual impact and it is very very important one of the dominion systems allocated for the saints is the capacity to legislate through prayer and you will think that many disciples um, and many who submit themselves to different platforms understand prayer um, but at the end of this series you will find out that very few people truly understand prayer may God grant us understanding two scriptures psalm 65 and verse 2 please let's hurry up media psalm 65 and verse 2 O thou that hearest prayer unto thee shall all flesh come this is a very powerful revelation that means not everyone can hear prayer this man got this scripture by research i'm sure that he experimented praying to different deities and watched carefully for the feedback and he noted that there was one who seemed to always have the power to answer and he says O thou that hearest prayer unto thee this is my recommendation all flesh that means that I have arrayed a sample of various people who have the capacity to hear prayers. And out of my research, this is my conclusion. All flesh be directed to this one deity. Because through experience, we have seen that he sustains the ability to answer prayer. Luke chapter 11. The ministry of Jesus is one of the, the earthly ministry now. I, every time I study scripture, I like to study the Gospels a lot. Um, not just because it's the interface between the old and the new, but because the Gospel is primarily the earthly ministry of Jesus. And the Bible says to look up to Jesus. That means model your life and your convictions after that pattern. When Jesus walked upon the earth, notice that jesus had extensive times of mentorship and the teaching of those who would later become his apostles are we together and the disciples continued to observe jesus they saw the kind of results that he got and they noticed that every time before the results would come he would communicate with the father in a certain way before performing whatever he would have to do they continue to note that progression 
that Jesus did not just blindly do things. Sometimes he would retreat and tell them he was communicating with heaven. And then he would return and they would see the results. So the disciples continued to take note of that. Remember that they were walking with Jesus and they really wanted to be like him. So they were studying everything that he was doing. And in Luke chapter 11... When this was after the lecture that happened in the house of Mary and Martha. Remember? Martha was running around. This is Luke's gospel now. Martha was running around and Mary was sitting and you know. He said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things. This is one thing is needful to sit at the feet of the master. So after all of that, um, we go to verse 11. And the Bible says, Jesus now is beginning to teach on prayer. So Jesus taught on prayer. Pay attention to anything Jesus taught on. Because that meant that it, was, it, it had a, a major role in the believer's work and in birthing victory. Jesus, Luke chapter 11 and verse 1. Are we there? 11 verse 1, media, not 11. 11 verse 1. And it came to pass that as he was praying... In a certain place. So what was he doing? In a certain place. So we see that he was praying. And we see that there was a location. The Bible says when he sees. That means when he finished. Brought it to an end. One of his disciples said to him. Lord teach us to pray. That means men can be taught to pray. Prayer. As a ministry must be taught. To be effective. Now, many believers do not know that it is the teaching on prayer that makes prayer effective. Not praying. The understanding that sponsors your, your action is where the victory is. Our, our, our world today is full of people who believe that the only way to pray is just to talk and begin to shout. And you will soon learn in this series that many people continue to shadow box. There is no accuracy. The disciple did not say we cannot pray. No. The problem here was not prayerlessness. I hope you understand what we are saying. The Bible says, the Bible did not say the disciples later came. Uh -uh, they were there. Listen, he finished praying and one of his disciples said to him, he was within range. So, we are not discussing prayerlessness here. This is not a backsliding person saying, Lord, restore my prayer life. This is not an issue of restoration. This is an issue of praying amiss. There is no result. And he's saying, Lord, we give up. We've been trying to copy you, but it's very clear we are not getting something. So, teach us to pray. So, prayer should be taught. Not just conducted. Okay, everybody, oh yeah, open your mouth and pray. Mm -mm. Prayer should be taught. If all we continue to do is to say, pray, 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 everybody pray, very soon we will be tired, like many believers are. Prayer meetings in many churches have the least um, uh, attendance. Do you know why? It's a testimony, it's a report card, it's a track record. Thank God that's not the case with this ministry. Do you know why? Because prayer works. When prayer works, people will prove to you by their commitment. Many churches and many assemblies today are frustrated. Prayer meetings are, in, 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 respectfully speaking, some of the most boring and pointless. And people come and you know they don't expect an answer. And while they are praying, different people are just conjuring versions of Ways that they, they come up with to try to communicate. Some are not serious. Some are even typing. Because they, they feel it's more profitable. They are aware that it will not be answered. So the disciples said, teach us to pray. Someone said, teach us to pray. I thought Jesus would turn and say, no, you don't teach prayer. Pray, my friend. Jesus is about to answer that prayer now. Teach us to pray. Please go back verse 1. Let's finish up. Verse 1. As John taught his disciples. Are you seeing that John was a very, very, very good mentor? John taught the disciples. 
The disciples of John were not just great people for nothing. John did not just pray in the wilderness. You produce prayer warriors, not just by praying, by the accurate teaching of the prayer ministry. In many churches, they just say, if you want to join prayer band, that means if you have passion for prayer. Now, understand this. I'm not trying to be sarcastic. Uh, if you want to join prayer band, and then, you know, everybody who believes that he has some kind of zeal for spiritual things, they now join the prayer band and say, we are now going to pray. And everybody is waiting for the prayer point. We are going to ask the Lord to move in a way and a manner that even me, I don't even know. Just open your mouth and pray. And, you know, everybody is just praying and, and, and honestly. Listen, I know people are dissipating energy and I don't mean to be sarcastic. But stand from God's standpoint and you are watching people praying. And you see someone praying and just say, just tell everybody, stop! Stop where you are. What were you doing? And what do you mean, what I was? They asked us to pray. I know, but what did you expect? What were you saying? You will be amazed to know how many people who did not have any idea of what they were doing. It was just an honor to a ritual. An energetic ritual. Are we together? Verse 2. And he said unto them, Jesus now, I love Jesus. Ah, I love Jesus. I really love Jesus. The way he mentors is powerful. The confidence. Teach us to pray. Of course you don't know how to pray. Sit down, let me teach you. And Jesus is teaching now. When ye pray, so they were already praying. So he is not restoring their prayer life. He is rearranging the pattern to make sure it works. Are you following me this night? Jesus did not say, you guys don't even pray. Mm -mm. He said, I know what you are asking for. You have been praying and praying and this thing is not working. And now you are saying, teach us to pray. Even as John taught the people. So Jesus is now saying, when ye pray, say. Say. This should be the content of your prayer. You want to understand this properly, you have to go to Matthew's account. Um, we'll delve here. I, I brought you here to see the teachers to pray. Let's go to Matthew's account, chapter 6. Um, and then we'll see what Jesus Christ... Matthew chapter 6. Go to verse 4. Alright, 5 now. And when thou prayest... So we're continuing now. Another person's account. Thou shalt not be as the hypocrites... What is the relationship between prayer and hypocrisy? Jesus is talking about prayer and he's now talking about hypocrisy. That when you pray, you can pray like hypocrites. So how do hypocrites behave? They love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen, not that the prayer should be answered. So the hypocrisy there is the motif behind that. That it's possible a man can be praying and what you are doing in the spirit is hypocrisy. You are more concerned about the testament of those seeing you than you are about the, the contact you make and the answer it produces. The Bible says whoever has used that state is a hypocrite. Are we together now? They love to do it. So hypocrites love to pray. But the Bible says that the, the motive behind their prayer is to receive some kind of self-respect from men. They are not interested in the prayer being answered. They are just concerned about having a testimony before men that my prayer life is not down. And believe me, there are so many people who are victims of this. They are more concerned about your hearing them pray. They are more concerned about the respect and the honor that you give them by reason of your witnessing their prayer life. They are not concerned about the efficiency of the prayer. Their real reward and their real attraction is not answer, it's not fellowship. It is the fact that they want men to know and to attest to the fact that you are prayerful. Hallelujah. 
Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. What is their reward? The applause that they get from men. So when you see me pray all the time, for instance, if somebody says, does Joshua Selman pray? He says, ah, the other day. You know that voice we were hearing is well, as if it was a, a tractor that was cutting. That, that was him. Of, that is my reward. What is the reward? The respect that I receive. Whether perceived or real, you have gotten your reward. Next verse. But when, but thou. That means since you taught me, you want to use my own formula now. It says you, when you pray, enter into your closet. Now, the idea is not secrecy. Please understand what Jesus is saying here. I will explain to you. It looks like he's just talking secrecy. Because he said your father who sees you in secret. But I will explain something very powerful. He says enter into thy closet. The idea is not hiding from people. The idea is the purity of your motif. That your focus should not be centered on just the visualizations of men in your prayer. But that your father who sees what is the purpose of the secrecy so that you will not be seen. To purify the sincerity of that activity. So it is not so much about hiding away from people. than it is the purity of the motif, the intent that is back of your prayer. Do you get the idea now? So that you don't think that Jesus is just saying, just go and hide somewhere. How do you now pray as a prayer band? How do you now pray as a church? The idea is not just secrecy. The spirit and the intent of what Jesus was saying here was that the secret place helps you because there, there's no point to prove. There's no human there now. To be able to corrupt the purity of your desire. So in that similitude. So the secret place is not really just a place. It is a mindset. It is an understanding. You can carry the secret place to a public place of prayer. And that while you are praying, your concern is not really the accreditation of men. But the purity of that fellowship. Are we following tonight? Teach us to pray. And when thou hast shut the door, pray to your father in secret, and your father who is in secret will reward you openly. You now understand what I, what I explained here. Next verse. Verse 7. But when you pray, now watch this. Use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. Now hold on. Jesus is not saying don't repeat prayer. He's saying there is a way the heathen do. You have to study this contextually. In ancient times, there was a way that the hidden pray. They pray doing a lot of enchantments to idols. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Jesus is not saying repetition in prayer is wrong. Uh -uh. He's qualifying what he's saying. He's saying there is a repetition that is in the similitude of how the hidden operate. Because in those days, those who prayed to idols and the rest, they used magic books. And they used all kinds of books that had um, activities of sorcery and all of that. So the, they did not understand what they were saying. The miracle was not in the understanding. The miracle was in the ritual of the enchantment. There are many cultures that still do it today. There are many um, occultic groups today that still do it. I watched a video where... Um, a place in Asia, I would not mention the name. I watched a video, not that they told me. Someone had, I think it was, it was cancer, cancer of something. You could see the swelling. I mean, they were showing it, the, the visuals was there. And these guys are doctors, but they are also healers. They have their lab coat, but they also, you know, they, they have their way of using energy and all of the rest to heal. I watched it's not like they told me. The person to go through the surgery was lying down there and they did not perform any surgery in terms of any um, opening of the body and all of that. They started chanting something. They were chanting it and they started chanting it fast. You know, repeating it for a very long time until they themselves were almost possessed by it. And while they were talking right in the, the uh, um, video, you would see the cancer just melting, going down like that. It was over. And they all clapped for themselves, hugged themselves. Jesus is saying there is a way the hidden. When they are praying to an idol, an idol does not need your understanding. 
Your idol just needs your motion and your alliance or allegiance to a ritual. Are you getting the point now? The hidden do not expect their God to speak. They don't expect all of those things. So they chant a lot of things. And he's saying, when you pray, I have noticed that you have borrowed a prayer life from other hedonistic nations. So when you pray to God, you don't pray like you are praying to someone alive. And you are victims of enchantments that are akin to magic books. Are we together now? You notice in the book of Acts, one of the exploits of the apostles, there were books that were brought out, they were burned. Some of those books were used for prayer. Till today, they still use it. There are many pseudo-Christian sects and there are many other occultic groups that make use of certain books where there are enchantments. They can tell you, chant this 90 times. Chant this five times. Chant this. And the person is just doing it. So I'm, I'm trying to balance this because many people have erroneously said this to mean that um, the Bible... Jesus was teaching here that don't repeat any prayer. That means if you say, Lord, I bless you, that's all right. If you repeat it again, or Father, grant me this, and you say it again, it is unbelief. That's not what the Bible is saying. Jesus himself, if that is the thought, he broke the rule. Because when Jesus was in Gethsemane, he prayed using the same word three times. So he certainly was not teaching here about vain repetition. Are you getting this now? Remember... God is teaching us how to pray. So he's giving us the rules of engagement to understand the boundaries of effective prayer. Do not use vain repetition in the similitude of the hidden. Are we together? And there is a reason why he says that. Oh dear. Matthew, let me turn there quickly so that we make progress. Is God already helping someone? When thou prayest, use not vain repetition. So notice what Jesus is saying now. Jesus has spoken about three things. Teach us to pray. And Jesus says, sit down. When you pray, number one, do not be like the hypocrites. That's the first thing he's addressing. In teaching you to pray. And then he describes his concept of hypocrisy. Are we together now? We have to observe the things that Jesus said to observe. Because in, in Matthew 28, he said, teaching them to observe everything that I have shown you. Teach them. Pay attention. All the things I stress, stress it when you are teaching them. All the things that were minus, let it remain minus as you are teaching them. Teaching them to observe. Don't just bypass these things and go to our Father who art in heaven. That's a hedonistic, once you don't have the revelation, that prayer becomes a powerless ritual. Are we together? Yes. Don't jump the steps. Number one, the first blockage, he says, is the propensity to be a hypocrite. And what is the hypocrisy? That your motive has not yet been purified. You're, you are more concerned about the witness of men. The accreditation that men have. And it's true. Because you see, in the world that we live in, it's a wonderful thing to have a good report. A good report before men is a noble thing. However, with respect to your dealings with God, sometimes it is better to not have a good report before men and then have a good report before God. But because of the way our civilization has been so programmed, um, it looks more profitable to have a good report before men. So Jesus is saying that is the first thing you have to correct. The first challenge to prayer life is not attack. He has not mentioned a demon here. He has not even mentioned Satan here. Can you imagine that? He's already showing you the things that can waste your time. That when you pray under this condition, you were not praying. So as I approach effective prayer, the first revelation is to be able to ward off the propensity for hypocrisy by ensuring that whether or not people look at me, I trust by the help of the Holy Spirit. We'll learn that in, in the latter part of the series. By the help of the Spirit, to be able to look past the deception. Oh, I'm praying now. And wow, someone will be there and say, wow, look at this guy. I mean, just look at the way this guy is praying. This is two hours and he's still going. He's saying, be careful. 
while that is commendable because it can inspire that person to rise, you can be a victim of your own action. Because a time will come when you will reduce yourself from the real contact with his presence to you are just, you want people to see the scribes and the Pharisees. That's the first thing we are correcting. The desire to be seen and to be accredited as a prayerful person for the sake of personal applause of men. The Bible says you have your reward there. Then the second thing that God is dealing with now is the to enter your closet. You see, the idea is still buttressing on that point. I told you that the idea is not just to be enclosed in a place. Although, listen, although, to be honest with you, if all of your prayer is public, you don't know much about prayer. Are we together? Because the real encounters that will happen to you literally will happen in the secret. When you are alone with God. Everybody say alone with God. Yes. When it has to do with prayer ministry, there are dimensions of prayer where it is not husband and wife. It is not father and children. It is not pastor and members. Are we still together? It is not colleagues. It is not even prayer group members or church members or department members. There are dimensions in prayer like Jacob where you have to be alone. There are certain things God cannot come in to reveal when you are corporate. You have to be alone. But whether you are alone or you are outside, you must carry the idea of a secret life. That means that when we are praying here as a congregation, we lift up our voices and we begin to pray. In your mind, you must be able to pray with the assumption that you are alone with God. Not just that we are corporately together. Because there is a level of self-consciousness that will rob you from receiving from God. Are we together? There are people, for instance... The awareness that someone is looking at them. You just remember that, ah, maybe this person likes me. Or let me not waste my chance now while I'm praying. You see, that, this is what Jesus is trying to stop. When you assume you are in the closet, you are not concerned whether your trouser is going down. Or whether your shoe is coming out. That the focus is that I am communicating with the God of all flesh. To him that answers prayer. This simple reason is why many people have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because they carry their beauty into the experience. They carry their masculinity into the experience. How do I now start praying in tongues? Bah, 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 bah. I, I, I schooled in UK. And uh, now when I start doing this, will I look fine? Will I not look fine? Uh, am I going to disgrace my countenance? Jesus said... If you don't carry that mindset of secrecy while you pray, you will be too self-conscious to make spiritual contact. And then the third thing he's addressing is vain repetition in the similitude of the hidden. Now look at this. The Bible is not a magic book. The name of Jesus is not a magic um, a, a journey. You see that? There is power in the name because of the person whose name it is. Not because of the name itself. There is an owner to that name. And that owner is alive. BMW is not a car. BMW is a company. They produce cars. So that signature there, you can trace a real person who is the owner of that company. Jesus it's not just an enchanted name that has power in it. No. At the back of that name is a real person. Are we together now? And if you just focus on the name as a magic ritual and do not focus on the person, you are behaving like the hidden. This is why, let me, listen to me. I'm teaching you this. It is why for many years, I, I shared with you my experience. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, and these wicked demons did not leave me. Because... The revelation of the person behind the name. I wasn't really interested. I just know that in Jesus' name, ask the sons of Sceva. Huh? Ask the sons of Sceva. We adjure you 
by Jesus whom Paul preaches. And the demon said, nonsense. That's not how it works. Jesus we know. Paul we know. Who are you? And the demon pounced on them, the Bible says. Stripped them naked and beat them and drove them out. Imagine a prayer team going into a room to minister to someone. All right, let's go. A delegation and they enter. And you hear silence for a long time. And you are wondering, you are seeing lots of things going on, motion. And you think, my God, you can imagine what the devil is going through. And the next thing you see a door open forcefully. And you see adults running naked, all beaten by one person. Do you know what reproach that testimony is to the name of the Lord? Let me tell you, if it happened in the days of the, of the sons of Sceva, it can still happen today. Because those demons have not left it. They are around. What if the demons that beat that guy are the ones oppressing your family? Use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think. So he's talking mindset here. The vain repetition is a mindset issue. For they think that they shall be heard. Not for the power and the potency, but for their much speaking. Their mindset is pegged at the volume of the speech. And not the power that is back of what they are saying. Not the truthfulness of the communication, but the volume. So he's addressing hypocrisy. He's addressing um, that, that life that makes you self-conscious, that you are not able to focus. And then number three, he's addressing the issue of vain repetition, that the power in prayer is not in the enchantments. The power in prayer is in, well, let me not go ahead of myself. Eight. Be not ye therefore like them. Why? This is the revelation that exempts you from that kind of life. For your heavenly father knoweth what, ye, what things ye have need of before you ask him. Wait, keep this scripture. It's a very dangerous scripture. That means your heavenly father is aware. So why will he allow you to still pray? Don't just jump this talk. If my heavenly father knows that I need rent... Oh God, why frustrate me to pray before you send rent? Why frustrate me to do these things? Are you seeing that now? Your heavenly father knows what you have need of before you ask him. Um, this can mean many things. Number one, this can mean that prayer then is not limited to petitions alone. Your heavenly father knows the needs you have, but he's more interested in fellowship. So he will still allow you to come. Are we together? He can grant you the answer without you coming but that will rob him an opportunity for fellowship so he will allow you to come in prayer so that prayer will do many things it automatically tells you that the purpose of prayer is not just a system for needs to be met your heavenly father knows that you have this need before you ask him but number two it also validates the pattern of god what is the pattern of god the pattern of God is that he gave man dominion. Are we together now? And he gave man a will. And the moment God gave man a will, it became scripturally incorrect for God to veto the will of man and supply anything. Mm -mm. Even at the expense of your eternal salvation, he allows you to choose him. At the expense of your eternal doom, he will still not force salvation on you. Are we together now? Yes. Nine. After this manner, the mentor, Jesus, he didn't say pray like this, no? He would have brought a lot of error. He said, after this manner, what is manner? The pattern. Are we together now? It is not copying the recitation, but that in this thing we call the Lord's Prayer, like a ladder, there is a pattern. Discern by the Spirit the pattern and use it in your prayer. And it will make your prayer as effective as my own. He did not say copy the words, Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, who art in heaven. No. 
That's not what Jesus was saying. Of course, I believe there's an advantage just quoting it like that the way it is. But the idea was not for you to recite. You become like the hypocrite again. He's saying after this manner. So let's study it now. That means in this, this description is a hidden code. Are we together? A code of operation that reveals the sequence of effective prayer. Are you ready? Let me pause there a bit and just share a few things as a background. I wrote a few things here that I don't want us to miss. Number one, I wrote here that prayer is part of the priestly ministry of all saints, all believers. Prayer is part of the priestly ministry. Please, if you're writing, you may want to write it down. That prayer is part of the priestly ministry. So when the Bible says we have been made unto our God, Revelations 5 and verse 10, uh, kings and priests, there is the priesthood ministry of the church. And that part of the priesthood ministry of the church is to offer that incense of prayer. So all believers are called to pray. There might be individual people who by reason of their call and the election um, have been graced to function in certain dimensions of the prayer ministry. However, all believers are called and mandated as a priestly ministry to pray. Matthew chapter 21 and verse 13 Jesus himself, after flogging people from the temple, remember when Jesus made a whip and flogged all the people, when he drove all of them out and turned the exchangers and turned everything, released all the doves and the cattle to go away, he said, my house shall be called the house of prayer. So God wants his house to be called the house of prayer. The house where there is access to commune with the father my house shall be a place where communication with heaven should not be difficult are we together now a house of prayer but you have made it a den of thieves or robbers so god himself wants his house to be called the house of prayer why pray write it down i want to give you six reasons i think i we have to do this before we go into the dynamics of the patterns of prayer. Even if we can't finish it today, we'll take it off next week. It's important for us to understand. Why do we have to pray? Number one. In this kingdom we pray first because it is a command. Believers are commanded to pray. This is a little Bible study now. Luke chapter 18 and verse 1. Please write it down. And then 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17. Remember, we are taught to pray. So there is, we, are, we are receiving the teaching now so that our prayer will be effective. Prayer is a command for believers. Luke 18 and verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them, unto this end, that men, not some men, Men, once you are a man, you are mandated in this kingdom to pray. He spake a parable that men ought always to pray and not to faint. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17. He says, pray without ceasing. That does not mean pray from morning till night. You will live an ineffective life. It means be consistent in your prayer life. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Don't go on break and resume after five months. Are we together? Be consistent. Be consistent in your prayer life. The second reason why we need to pray is that it is one of the strategies for fellowship 
with the Father. It is not the only platform, but it is one of the, fellowship, the, the platforms. Many people think that prayer is the only way to fellowship with the Father. No, no. But it is one of the major strategies for fellowship. First Corinthians chapter 14 verse 2. Paul is teaching here and he's teaching the church in Corinth about prayer. And he said, please give it to us, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And now he's saying it, of course, with respect to praying in tongues. But he said, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, look up please, speaketh not unto men, not unto men, not unto men. This is not the gift of of tongues are we together like a a ministry one of the nine gifts no he's saying he speaketh not unto men but unto god for no man understandeth it how be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries so it's very important it is one of the strategies for fellowship for communion it was paul that was was praying and he said the grace of our lord jesus christ remember he said the love of God and then he said the communion that's where we get the word koinonia from the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always be with you always the communion it means the sharing together it means intimacy it means intercourse it means the participation of the Spirit the oneness that comes through fellowship He's praying that it remains with the saints. Why? Because it is only with God that all things are possible. And so whatever makes you to lose your connection and to rob you of an opportunity for intimacy has also destroyed your potential for efficiency. It is one of the strategies for fellowship. Number three. Why do we pray? Please never forget this. God is making our prayer lives fruitful. Why do we pray? Number three, it is a platform for growth and transformation. The growth process of the believer was so designed that prayer will play a major part in your growth. That means believers that don't pray cannot grow effectively. In fact, cannot even grow. It is a platform for growth and transformation. Three scriptures. Luke chapter 9, please give it to us. Luke chapter 9 from verse 28 to 29. Luke chapter 9 from verse 28 to 29. And it came to pass about an eight days after these sayings, he took Peter and John and James and went up the mountain to do what? Not to rest, to pray. Next verse. And as he prayed, what happened? The fashion of his countenance was altered. And his raiment became white and glistering. That glory and that transformation came as a result of prayer. So when you pray, it is a system allocated for your growth and for your transformation. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 4. That's the second verse you will write under that point. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 4. After that, we'll go to the book of Jude. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. The word edifieth there is, is an architectural term. It means that he builds up. He builds up himself. Are we together? That means that you build up yourself akin to an exercise. Imagine someone who is working out every day and just making sure that he's fit and healthy this is what he's saying that he that prays in an unknown tongue he that prays now edifies himself so it's a system for growth jude jude has only one chapter and we we'll read verse 20. it says but ye beloved if you are not beloved that scripture is not for you but but ye beloved building up yourselves Building up yourselves, building up yourselves on your most holy faith by praying, by praying. You build up yourself on your most holy faith. What does this mean? That you are growing and increasing in discernment. You are growing and in your, your faculties of interacting with the realm of the spirit are being heightened and fine-tuned in the place of prayer. 
One of the classic signs of prayerlessness is lack of discernment. You know immediately that a man's prayer life is dead when your discernment is dead. What is discernment? The faculty of perception. The faculty of spiritual perception. The ability to be able to perceive the impulses of the realm of the spirit. To perceive danger. To perceive joy. To perceive the activity of angels. Are we together now? All of these things. Remember, look up please. I've taught you here that man... Can I use you please? Come, doctor. Come, um, Jakes. Stand here. Watch this. Man is spirit. Everybody say spirit. That man lives in a body. Man is not spirit like a separate entity. Soul like a separate entity. Then body like a separate entity. That teaching is not very accurate. Are we together? Man is a spirit primarily. That means his sphere of reality is the realm of the spirit. This spirit cannot interact with the earth realm because based on the law of territory, it must have a material body that is consistent with that ecosystem to be able to walk. Are we together now? So this spirit, if it finds its way to the earth, it will move the same way demons are moving. And so God made this spirit a legal occupant in the earth by giving it a material body. Are we together? But there, there was a challenge and God needed to solve it. Why? Because the earth realm and the realm of the spirit, they are all part of God's kingdom. But the dimensional nature of their operation makes it impossible for spirit to operate and body to come there. You cannot switch them. So there is, a, there is an issue now. The spirit cannot relate with the body because there is a disparity in the realms. And so God decided to create a bridge. The faculty that connects the spirit and the body, he called it a mind. Are we together now? That that mind consists of will, emotions, and intellect. Those faculties were put as the bridge that the spirit will use to interact with the body. And the bridge that the body will use to execute the impulses of the spirit. Now watch this. When you call man a soul, what you mean is the spirit in partnership with this faculty of consciousness. That's what is called a soul. Are we together now? If a man dies, you don't see three people coming out or two people in the air going to either heaven or hell and then you see a body lying down there. No. There is no record of that in scripture. Jesus gave up a ghost, not many ghosts. Only one spirit left that body and only one spirit returned. Are, you, are, you, are we together now? Yes. The realm of the spirit, watch this, controls the physical realm. The Bible tells us that. That the things that appear, paraphrasing, came from the things which do not appear. Remember, I never said the things that are not real. They just are unreal from this dimension. That means that Man, being spirit and dwelling in a body, has an advantage of the duality of realms. Are we together now? That dual nature is what makes the body to receive impulses that it cannot explain. So when you stand and suddenly there is a heaviness in your heart, you don't even know why. There's no joy again. It's as if the spirit man is perceiving something from the realm of the spirit and then because it is connected through the mind to the body is trying to transmute that but because please help this lady but because your prayer life is down look up please the 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 fortitude to receive that perception so that the body can execute what the spirit is saying is not there i'll give you an instance the spirit of death can be roaming around a family. Are we together? And now, because in the realm of the spirit, there are no secrets. I hope you know. Um, there are secrets, but what I mean is that nothing is hidden, really. There are secrets even in the spirit, but nothing is hidden. Are we together? Now, watch this. When the spirit of death is roaming around, your spirit is perceiving it. Your spirit knows. The spirit of death knows. 
If you came out of your body in the realm of the spirit, you will no longer be in a vision. Ah, Dev, what are you doing here? He said, ah, I've been here. Is it that I'm, I'm not just coming? I've been there. But because the body was unfruitful, excuse me, are we together? The body was unfruitful. So when you begin to pray, what happens is that there is a rearranging. Because the way the flesh works, it, it attempts to subjugate the spirit to a point where it cannot gain that ascendance. This is where the advantage of things like fasting and so on and so forth can come in. Are we together now? All of this we are going to discuss. But generally, this man, the spirit of death is loitering around his vicinity. And he's moving around because he's deadened in the flesh. His organs of perceiving. Imagine in the physical that you cannot hear. Hello? You cannot um, smell. You cannot see. You cannot sense. Are you alive? Are we together now? Yes. You are not alive. Because I can be killing you and you are not aware. The only thing you just know that you are fainting. And then you go into coma and die. Because the ability is not there. I can be talking to you, supplying an information you cannot hear. The same way there are physical senses, there are also spiritual senses. And that these spiritual senses, the same way you have blindness, you can have spiritual blindness. Deafness, you can have spiritual deafness. Are we together? Yes. The same way your body, I don't know the name of what the sickness is, where people don't feel when you touch them. You can have that same thing too in the realm of the spirit. So even if the Holy Spirit is saying, Mr. Man, you are, not, you are not there at all. And the Bible says, I'm explaining to you, that when you begin to pray, what is happening is that there is a fine tuning. The spirit, your spirit man, begins to gain ascendance. And you can stand and just sense and know. And because your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit is heightened, you, it, the Holy Spirit is at liberty based on the strength of your spirit man, to use whatever faculty he pleases to reveal to you what to do. So he can use your hearing and you hear. He can use your seeing, you will see a vision. He can use the knowing in your heart and you come with perception. He can even move you into his will. The more you pray, you are giving the Holy Spirit the versatility of options to be able to communicate the will of God to you. Are you getting what this, this scripture is saying now? That means that people who don't pray, imagine that this guy is blind spiritually, deaf on one ear spiritually, are we together? Cannot sense anything. Look at the little allowance the Holy Ghost has to communicate destiny things to him. So you can have a dream, but because you are spiritually blind, you will see nonsense. You will get up from that dream and write things that was not really what was revealed. Why? Because the problem is blindness. Remember, Paul was blind, but he was still seeing. He was, had, he was in a vision. He said, when you understand this, prayer is no longer about give me tea, give me bread. You are saying, Holy Spirit, you are at the mercy of my faculties of interaction. Your, your possibilities are limited by the space I give you. Could it be that if you were prayerful and you became sensitive, you would have been able, not just something dangerous, you would have been able to know. Let me tell you this, when you become very sensitive, the Holy Spirit, depending on the gravity of what he's communicating, he can use multiple channels to strengthen your conviction. Very powerful what I'm sharing with you. We pray because it is a platform for growth and transformation. I will never forget how Koinonia started. We were already, you know, doing ministry and doing a lot of things. But I just knew that for some reason, a season was about to come to a close and another season would start. Everybody say perception. That's right. That's what happens. And it's not enough to perceive. You can perceive and what you perceive is unfruitful to you because you don't know what it is and you don't know what to do about it. Are we together? And I remember that time, I just got up one morning happy, blessing the Lord for the day and suddenly, 
the Lord just summoned me, go for a retreat immediately. I just packed my things. People, you are not seeing me again. The Lord is calling me. Now, what if I got there and God said, I don't know why you are here. Who asked me? See, I pray for you sincerely. May God have many options on how to communicate his intents to you. May, look at me. I'm going to be, ah, I wish, oh dear, Holy Spirit, grant us grace. Let's see what we can do. I will be showing you from this teaching that if you are blind spiritually and suddenly, without growth and renewal, Satan can give you an aberration of vision and show you something. See, a faculty that God is not used to leading you with, he will never use it on sensitive matters of your life. This is one way you know you are under attack already. Let me give you an example. Ah. Watch this. Do you know that I will be showing you as we continue that every believer, based on your personalized work with God, God has studied you and for every season there is a primary channel of spiritual communication. The most accurate that God has found Based on your renewal, when you change seasons and you grow, he will readjust too. So there are people who God has found out that based on his work with them, dreams are the most powerful way of releasing the fullness of his will and then they believe in it. Because it's one thing for God to release an impulse through a channel, but if your reception is wrong, you will corrupt the purposes of God. It's hard work what the Holy Ghost does in men. So he has to keep trying. That's why there are many times it's like you had something, but you are not clear. God is testing those faculties and seeing your response. Are we together now? Ah, it's as if I had something. And you are not serious about it and God said, ah, no. If we walk with these guys hearing, something is going to be wrong. Let's go back to the dream. And it's better to fight the warfare there and fight you the dream. Are you now seeing why a dream was used for Joseph? Now watch this. Many believers have not been used to God speaking in a certain way. And then when it now comes to major decisions in their lives, the devil will now use a method. Uh -uh. The way you kill the bear, the way you kill the lion is how you will also kill Goliath. When Saul gave him another arsenal, David said, I'm not used to this. I was not trained with this. How you were trained is how you will fight the battle. So when God trains you, listen, please, this series is very powerful. Listen, God trains you and finds out that the way you are, the environment you came from, the unbelief there is too great. The strongest point until you marry and leave that environment, a dream remains the most valid way of his communicating. Your hearing will always be in error because the environment cannot allow you to grow that way. God will limit himself to that thing. You will find out that 90% of your hearing will be nonsense. So when we have a responsibility as believers to study the various channels of spiritual communication, Versus our believing them and the results. Over time, if you study this, you can know that when God says release your best arsenal to hear me, you know what to release. There are people, this their ears is like a magnet. There is, if God speaks, even if God speaks from Bangila, they will hear. They have sharpened their ears. But if God shows them anything, they, are, they will not see so God will limit his walking to their ears. There are others. Look at prophets in the Bible. There were others who were seers. There were others who were not just hearing alone. Please help them, those under the anointing. They were not just hearing. Listen, look up please. And they were not just seeing. But these were people who God will make them act what he wants to do. Physical acting so that they cannot doubt it. A prophet was asked to lie down on one side of the bed for one year. A prophet was made to marry a prostitute called Goma to act out the harlotry of the nation of Israel. You cannot doubt that one now. Ah. 
by wisdom, oh God, heaven's gates open now, with understanding you order the sea. Creating day and night, turning darkness into light, arranging the stars to your feet. Blessed are you, O oh Lord, our God. Eternity's holy king. Blessed are you, O oh Lord, our God. Word Listen. Part of what prayer does to you. We've not started dealing with the patterns of prayer. We are just examining why we should pray. You have to, the way God will tell you wear this shirt today. He cannot use the same thing to say relocate to the U.S. The gravity of if if I don't wear the shirt that God wants me to wear today, the consequence will not be as grave. As God saying, my destiny is in the U.S. and I'm in Nigeria. So he will not use the same channel. He needs to use the channel that sends the strongest signal so you can receive. Look at this. One of the hardest things for the saints is to know when seasons end. Let me tell you, the proof of real stamina in prayer and in the spirit is the ability to discern when seasons end. It's a very difficult thing. That's why many ministries cannot grow. Because to know when you need to shift, to know when you need to relocate, to know when you need to start the TV ministry, your spiritual maturity is not tested in word of knowledge and prophecy. The ability to know that you have gotten to a crossroad in the spirit, I tell you, you can start another journey. For 10 years, you can be accurate in life and in ministry, and you just veer off. That's how you see someone who say, I'm a prophet today, tomorrow, and then he's confused. Our channels, listen, this, this duality of realms is where the confusion is. Because the way the realm of the spirit works, sit down for a few minutes, we are going to pray. The way the realm of the spirit works, listen to me, and the way the physical realm works is not correct. Or, or it, it does not work at the same um, frequency. Watch this. There are times if your spirit is healthy, and it's in partnership with the Holy Spirit. There are times that Satan, who is the master of the flesh realm, will create emergency in the earth realm. But when you check in the realm of the spirit, your spirit man is at peace. And he said, forget it. Nothing is really going on. If you don't know this, you will panic over everything. So when your spirit is strong, even when there are all kinds of things, you cross-check. Once the spirit is not betting anything, no matter what is happening here, you ignore it. This is why many people are stable. Satan knows that this, this faculty that connects you has a serious issue there. So he will play with water in the physical realm. And all of a sudden, when that is happening, you are just seeing everything shaking. Hey, and then the spirit of fear is trying to manipulate you. But when your spirit is strong, you know how to cross-check. When there is an emergency in the realm of the spirit, sometimes there can be absolute peace in the earth realm. And so you find out that God is telling you, start running. And you say, God, but there is peace here. He's saying, run. Run! There is trouble. And in, suddenly, the cloud of darkness just comes to cover people. See, I tell you why many people do not pray. It is not your fault. It is the ritual. This is what I'm trying to correct. I have watched this for many years. Many believers pray and they do not achieve much in prayer because they do not understand the scope, the boundaries, nor the importance of effective prayer. There are people today who have gone to the grave simply because they did not strengthen the capacity to function in these dual dimensions. That which is spiritual, that which is spirit, 
is of the spirit is spirit and that which is of the earth is earth way before your boss starts to threaten you the realm of the spirit has picked the signal why because he's already seen the formation of evil spirits it is the manifestation of the patterns that kept your father down and six months before your boss starts acting out the holy ghost is already sending the signal but because you you had the dream but you didn't understand what it ha, i know that i wrote an exam but i did not finish the exam what did it mean you don't know and because your faculty of interaction is not there you just sit down it's not about an exam these are ways, they are speakings of the Spirit. Let me tell you this. One of the hardest assignments of the Holy Spirit is to transfer the will of God from the heart of the Father to the mind of the saints. It is difficult. That's why when God finds one man who is aligned, you better stay out of the life and the way of that man. He will clear you for... Because he knows how hard it is. Jesus, Jesus, your Jesus is looking at the disciples and they are wondering why he's looking at them. And he's seeing Satan looking for a particular disciple to enter. Jesus is asking them a question. Who do men say that I am? And they are all laughing. No discernment. And yet Satan just came quietly and hijacked Peter's faculty. And Jesus is still watching. And the Peter himself is happy. Oh, you will not go to the cross. And Jesus looks and says, Get thee behind me, Satan. And Peter looks at me, Satan. He said, Peter, let me tell you the drama that has been happening that you are not even aware of. All the while I was looking at you, something was happening in the realm of the spirit. Satan continued to desire to sift you like wheat. He says, It is my prayer that saved you. I have prayed for you. That you faint not, he said, and when thou art converted, strengthen your brethren. There are many believers that pray, but they are not transformed. Because they don't know what happens. You have ears in the spirit. You have eyes in the spirit. You have faculties of interaction. The only thing is that, now respectfully speaking, people like Kenneth E. Hagin taught of course knowledge revelation is progressive our fathers like kenneth e hagen taught that we have five spiritual senses just like we have five physical senses well that may be two as at the time the revelation came but there are no five it's not five spiritual senses we have there are many spiritual senses that that um do not easily have physical expressions that's why all of them will be grouped and will just manifest as the same thing you would think you are having the same experience when i was praying yesterday my hands were hot when i was praying today my hands were hot your body interpreted it as heat but they were two different things it's just because your body is now limited it cannot it cannot express every impulse of the spirit hallelujah is that drizzling if it's raining we can we can do what we did last week please if we can walk people in um the season is almost gone so please let them come in let's make whatever sacrifice please sit down pray in tongues for one minute and then i continue we'll find somewhere this is a very serious series especially in the days that we live in Only you can satisfy me Only you can satisfy my soul Satisfy me Only you can satisfy me Only you can satisfy me
that's why the Bible says, let him that has an ear. That means it is possible that you don't have that ear. Son of man, he said, what seest thou? He said, an almond tree. He said, you have seen correctly. You can see wrongly. Please pay attention. We are going to pray. A platform for growth. Thank you all of you who are standing. Thank you so much for your sacrifice. Let's go to number four. Why do we pray? Why do we pray? According to scripture. Number four. Prayer is a platform for warfare and intercession. Write it down please. Prayer is a platform for warfare and intercession. Don't worry, wherever you can stand, just find somewhere and stand. A platform for warfare and intercession. Give us Acts chapter 12. Let's study the early church. Acts chapter 12, please. It's a long reading, but um, the verse of emphasis will be verse 5, and then we continue. Now, please look up. That prayer is a platform for warfare. Now, um, when I say warfare, especially in Africa, warfare means many things to many people. There are people who believe that warfare is some carnal confrontation of spirits in the flesh that is an ever continuous process without victory. I don't believe that. And then others also believe that the concept of warfare is just some kind of Christian talk that does not exist. I also don't believe that. There is a healthy balance concerning the subject of warfare that must be communicated. Acts chapter 12. Look up please. Now, about the time Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. So we're talking about a man here under the influence of wicked spirits to persecute the church. Please don't lose your focus, don't lose your attention. Two, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. So James is dead now. Number three, and because he saw that it pleased the Jews, look at this wicked man, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread, okay? During the feast. For, and when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. So he's about to destroy someone, the pillars of the church. Next verse. Peter, look at this. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without season of the church unto God for him. Prayer was made without season. And when Herod would have brought him forth, that same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. Can you imagine it? Aside from the fact that he's in prison, the two soldiers held him, he's tied with chains, and they're also sleeping close to him. So that if he moves and they wake up, they can say, where are you going to? He was bound with two chains, but the, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. Next verse. And behold, the angel of the Lord. Wait till next week when I will show you the ministry of prayer and the angels. The angelic ministry that excel in strength. If you do not understand the ministry of angels in prayer and the warfare dimension of prayer, you will get into trouble. The Bible is full of the ministry of angels in prayer. The angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shined in prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up saying, Arise up quickly, and the chains fell off from his hand. They are praying, and 
praying correctly because Jesus had taught them how to pray. Remember, before now, they were not getting results. Now, Jesus had mentored them. And the, the apostles now were mentoring the early church. So, there was no confusion as to whether the prayer would be answered or not. And while they prayed, something was happening in the realm of the Spirit. We'll find out next week. Because the Bible says that let it be done in the earth as it is in heaven. And so an angel came from heaven to make sure what is in heaven happens in the earth. He came to that prison and he said, God thyself, angels can speak. And bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, cast thy garment about thee and follow me. This is the angel. Next verse. And he went out and followed him and wished not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he was in a vision. Look at this. He was already so used to visions. He didn't know whether it was real or it was a visionary experience. When they were past the first, the second world, they came to the iron gate, which led to the city, which opened of its own accord. And they went out and passed through the street and forthwith the angel departed and said, you can go. Now, my brothers and my sisters, look at this. These are not parables. Can these things happen again? Why are they not happening? If this is true and scripture cannot be broken, that men prayed and physical angels... Let me give you... Let me give you a story. I like teaching on these kinds of things. Listen, I have many, many stories on this. Let me give you one of my... Okay, that would be the second or the third encounters with angels in the body now, not in visions. I was in Abuja um, one year, I can't remember, and then I got into a, a bus and I highlighted I was at Mararaba, you know, and my wallet fell and everything fell and the bus had gone. I was with one of my friends. And, you know, it was so frustrating for me. Um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I hope it will, it will be when we're trying to prepare for one of our crusades or so. And then everything had gone. And the town, it was busy. You would not even know which of the buses or who. Someone would have carried it. And I pleaded with my friend. I said, please, you have to just get a bike and then go to maybe where the park is and then they'll begin to check. I stood there and I was just praying in the spirit. And I remember the scripture that just came, he shall put his angels charge over thee and all of that. Now I tell the truth and I lie not. I fear God. I was standing there and the next thing, a man is limping. Remember the story? A man is limping with my wallet and brings to me and says, take and just turns and goes away. And I'm standing there and I'm looking at this man. What is your name? Who are you? At least let me say thank you. And after a while, I cannot remember seeing the man again. The first time we were going to hold our crusade in Joss, we were there and quite honestly we were confused and we did not know what to do. Suddenly a stranger walks up to me and says, get a bus and get a loud megaphone. He said, go around the city, remember, and do publicity. I never saw that man again. Angels are real. Our carnality has reduced us to a point where we don't even have the eyes and the perception. You would be, you would be joking to think everyone standing here is a human being. Do you know, I, I tell you the truth and I lie not. There are many times, I shared it, I started sharing it during the early days of Koinonia, but you notice I stopped. I stopped saying it for a reason. There are times that I would be ministering like this. And suddenly, you know, many things happen as a man of God when you are ministering. You cannot say everything. There are times that I'm standing here already and I'm having multiple visionary experiences while I'm ministering. It's training. With time, your spirit is, you, you understand it so you are not distracted. And there are many times when God opens my eyes. Now I see people, now not from the body. I now see the spirit man of people. And suddenly, you know, in the realm of the spirit, you know that it's an angel now. Because they excel in light. And suddenly you will check and you will find out that uh -uh, this person sitting down is not a human being. The moment they see me and we make contact, they will just stand up gradually and walk out. I've seen this thing many times when Koinonia started. I used to say it, but 
eventually i kept quiet because i don't want people to build their monuments you know people start to make all this uh, idolatry and the rest so i understand what this scripture is saying listen let me tell you warfare is real and it is important to be able to bet victory james chapter 5 and verse 13 we pray because it is an instrument of warfare what is warfare establishing the will of god in spite of the contentions of darkness that's warfare engaging scripture engaging the mysteries of the kingdom in prayer to establish the will of god satan will never let your destiny go not without a battle just because god said all things are yours does not mean all things will come to you just because um god said oh you'll be a great man you'll be he will attack you he will attack your children he will attack everything that can be attacked i believe in warfare when it is biblically engaged i believe that any believer who sits down and allows his destiny to move by default is in trouble he will never win in life are we together warfare and intercession what is intercession standing in the gap for someone else standing in the gap for a territory making petitions to heaven on behalf of an individual on behalf of a territory listen do you know why god allowed for intercession because of this explanation i'm giving because assuming for instance the spirit of death is attempting to take my life this night and i do not have the faculty to discern i can become a victim of it and that means my destiny and all who are connected to me will be in trouble so god see this how it is is a is is a is a, is, is a revelation of god's mercy the mercy of God starts moving around that territory to find who has the discernment and the will to obey God. Do you understand? So it's like a cloud. The Holy Ghost will come upon somebody in his room. He will shake up and say, God forbid, I need to sleep. The Holy Ghost will live quietly, find another house. But somehow he will just come to someone who just gets up and says something is wrong. He now says, pray pray in the spirit and while you are praying he does not know why he's praying and i do not even know him but because he's in the body his prayer life will now save me that's why when we get to heaven many people receive thank you for things they say well what is that he said in 1999 remember one three days fast you did that you don't even know what it was for that fast was what secured the man who would later become the president but you will never know that it was your prayer. If Anna the prophetess did not intercede for Jesus, they would have killed him. Believe me. If Jesus could not die, the angel would not say, he, run. He was in the flesh. The only thing is that the body will not decay. Are we together? Anna the prophetess was praying imagine this kind of intercessor she sacrificed her life since her husband died see i'm teaching you many things in this series because if anna the prophetess were in our generation and you saw anna the prophetess and saw apostle joshua selman anna the prophetess will bow to me and say you are the great man of god and we are the quiet people whereas you do not know that the way things happen in the realm of the spirit those that may be making the greatest impact may not be the joshua selmans and all of these people as visible as we look there will be one quiet mama somewhere that is the backbone behind our success that we may never know god gives this mama a mandate and say mama you have 30 more years to live and your assignment every day is to pray for someone called Joshua Selman. Where is he in the world? You don't need to know him. I may never know that the health of this ministry, the health of my life, primarily may be founded upon that deep intercessory ministry. If you really find an intercessor somewhere, not just a, 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 a lazy person who just says I'm an intercessor, but a real intercessor, respect them. See, if I bless you, you see me, I prophesy to you. You will package, uh, uh, help those under the anointing. You will package offering and come and give me. 
Is that true? If I speak over your life, they can carry that message all around the world. People will watch the videos and see me speaking. They will open doors for me. But if I intercede for you, there is no man who will see me to say thank you. These are the people who are greatly prized in the spirit. Some of them are here. They don't even believe that they are in ministry. I just have the grace for intercession. Do you know there are times that I'm sleeping and it's as if they are soaking me inside hot water. I know somebody somewhere is shouting on heaven on me. I can always say, allow me to sleep small now. There are times I know it's prayer band. That fire is coming from prayer band Tuesday. <laughs> there are times I know that individuals are just praying. They pray for Jesus. The Bible never said Anna the prophetess stopped praying after the dedication. She just said, my eyes have seen the consolation of Israel. Intercession is powerful. Listen to me. Don't sit back and allow the devil destroy your loved ones. I shared with you the story about my mom. One time that I saw what I saw. You must learn to pray. Some of you are not only lazy spiritually. You are responsible for the pain of many people. This is why sometimes when God is quarreling people, you think you are innocent. He will come and say, you are part of the reasons why these people are not doing well. Oh God, why? I put a burden on you to pray one time and you just carelessly said, it's not my business. There are selfish believers until God, that's why God will use the face of someone you love. It's not that something is wrong with that person. That's the only way. It's not always demons. It is the only way to wake you up to pray. Because if you saw another person, your selfishness will not allow you to stand up. So you see the face of the person who promised to marry you. And say, no, God, this cannot happen. I've waited long. Zakatam. And God said, that's it. You will be rewarded for praying. But that was the only skill to be able to lift you. Hallelujah. Warfare and intercession. James 5.13 Is any man afflicted? He says, let him do what? Is any man afflicted? The biblical approach to affliction is any man challenged by a situation you cannot understand? Before you sit down and start using your brain. Because you see, in the flesh you will calculate wrongly. What is going on? My children suddenly are falling sick in a way that I cannot explain. Suddenly money is disappearing in this family. Suddenly my wife, my husband, my children, it's like there is no peace. Suddenly my grandmother is hating me. I came out in the morning. Three accidents before returning back home already. If you are sensitive, that is affliction. The Bible says, don't sit down and start discussing scientifically. It says, start praying. Because when you pray, among the many things that happen is that you begin to perceive. You are allowing your spirit man, in partnership with the Holy Spirit, to draw forth what the real issue is and communicate to you. Hallelujah. How many of you have ever been confident about a decision? You were so bold until you prayed. Somewhere in that prayer, you stood and said, God, thank you. This I would have died. You felt like Ghana is the place God is sending you. In fact, everything in you was just spelling Ghana. Until you went to pray. When that prayer was done, you were embarrassed. You just stood there and said, so this I would have been on my way. Are we together? You know powerful believers by this one thing. They will tell you, Kai, I want to do this, this and that. And then two weeks later, they just keep quiet. You say, you won't do it again? I know what has happened to them. They have, they have gone to fine-tune that thing. A brother just looks at a sister and can almost be confident. I say, no, Abba, I know based on what I'm feeling, this is my wife. Until you go to pray. While you are praying, the flesh and the feelings are giving way to destiny. And when you rise up, then you will know that you would have made nonsense of your life. 
you now come back and say thank you Jesus are we together someone can come to you and say I'm a real estate mogul I'm this and that and that and you are sitting down you want to carry all your land papers and everything and give the person and you just say okay let me just sleep over it sir would you come tomorrow morning say, oh, fine no problem until you are sleeping in the night and you wake up and begin to pray and you find out that your entire destiny would have gone down because of lack of discernment when believers don't pray you know a believer who does not pray by the repetition of trouble that he always gets into see when you are getting into trouble again and again every bad thing waits till you come then it happens something is wrong with your prayer life i'm telling you this let's hurry up i'll give us two and then we'll end is this series already blessing you number what now why do we pray can you imagine we're just on why we pray why do we pray number five prayer according to scripture is a strategy to keep your faith alive it's a strategy to keep your faith alive luke chapter 22 media please give us quickly luke chapter 22 from verse 30 to 32 luke chapter 22 please that ye may eat and drink at my table and all of that and all of that 31 and the lord said simon simon satan had desired to have you like a possession right and that he may sift you like wheat huh he says but i have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not so how does satan sift men he does something to your faith what is faith conviction conviction listen when satan wants to sift you like wheat remember the bible said a double-minded man let him not think he will receive anything from the lord so when satan wants to make sure you don't receive anything he will begin to make you doubt your convictions he will manipulate the flesh realm and make sure that what you believed god but didn't you tell me this by january and now you are thinking is it god is it not God? Satan is attempting to seek you. Is it really extraordinary fruitfulness? God, this is September. Did Apostle really hear God well? Because it looks like it would have been the year where your stamina is built. Because this is my thing. It's been, I've, I've not seen any fruitfulness. Satan is sifting you like which, let me tell you. And he says when you pray, you stop your faith from failing. Your conviction. There are many things that believing them may be difficult for you, but start praying. Start praying. A word has been spoken concerning you. Ah, by November, by December, this would have happened. Doors would have opened. You will say, Amen, but you too, you know you don't believe it. Your pain has overwhelmed. You are used to prophecies not coming to pass, so you don't believe it. But when you begin to pray, something begins to happen in your spirit man it's like a gate it's like a compression that is broken suddenly you can believe god yes this is real lord i know you are able to do it prayer is a way that we keep our faith alive let me give us one more number six why do we pray the sixth reason why we pray is that it is a platform to make requests and petitions prayer is the authorized biblical platform to table your requests and to make petitions you don't make petitions in this kingdom by complaining the bible says do everything without complaining or arguing let me tell you this most believers do not pray most of what we think is prayer is just blind fleshly carnal argument what is this is this how life would treat me and god you are watching like that are you praying no you are not praying you are lamenting lamentation does not have a harvest of answered prayer no unto him that answers prayer hears prayer not complaints hears prayer not grumbling
Mark 11.24 Please, quickly, our time is gone. Mark 11.24 And then Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. Mark 11.24 Look at this. Jesus is teaching now. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire. Everybody say desire. desire. One more time, say desire. desire. When you pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall what? Amen. Three things. One, your desire. Number two, reception. Number three, manifestation. You first receive before you have. You cannot have what you have not received. You don't receive things physically. You receive them in the realm of the spirit. You have them physically. So it says, what things soever ye desire. Prayer is the channel that makes your desire to be received and then to manifest. When you pray. So you can have desires and leave them there. And you find out that nothing ever changes in your life. Desires. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. Philippians 4 and verse 6. Look up, please. Let's read together. Our time is gone, but please read with me. One to read. Be careful for nothing. Hold on. The word there, careful, um, is not, it's not trying to say you should live a careless life. Are we together? The word careful there, um, what's, what's the expression now? Huh? The word there is anxiety. Are we together now? Other versions will correct it and say be anxious for nothing. Right? So, be anxious, let's use for nothing. Then it says, but in everything. That means there is no matter that you should not pray for. In everything. The Bible does not isolate certain things and say don't pray for them. Are we together? There is no issue that cannot be prayed for. This is where we must put a little correction to our teaching on finance. A lot of people say, Prayer has nothing to do with finance. Uh -uh. There are keys. Are we together? Anytime prayer is not the key, prayer is the hand that holds the key. In any case, you will still need prayer. Either as the key or the hand that will hold the key to open the door. A key does not open itself. So prayer is important. The Bible says in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. This is a very interesting scripture. Because in one of the scriptures we read, the Bible says, For your heavenly Father already knows the things that you need. And now he's saying, make your request known to God. God wants the saints to make their request known. Because he answers prayers. You have many requests. Oh God, my house rent. Oh God, the issue of my stubborn child. Oh God, the issue of my destiny. I'm tired of escorting men in life, not knowing where I stand. Oh God, the issue of my finances. Oh God, the issue of fruitfulness. Oh God, the issue of this and that, the issue of my job. It's been 10 years, 20 years now, no job. The Bible says, don't be ashamed to make your request known unto God. That means it is not out of scripture when you pray in understanding. You can make your request known in God to God. Are you seeing why sometimes we come with our request here at Miracle Service? We are making it known to God. It is scriptural. God wants to know. Bring before him your request because he will answer. James chapter 4 verse 2 and 3. James chapter 4 Now look up. Look up. God is speaking now. Requests are very important in as much as Prayer is not, is not just for only asking things. There is a major part of prayer that was designed to allow your petitions reach heaven. The Bible says, ye lost and have not. That means ye desire so strongly and yet you don't have it. Ye kill huh, and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight. That means look at the alternatives you have introduced. Whereas prayer would have still given it to you. The inability to have prayed will make you to desire in an ungodly way that thing, whether money or whatever, and to kill even because of it, and then to fight because of it. He says, ye have not, simply because you ask not. That means if you can ask, 
there will be no reason to kill no jealousy none of these things because the same lord is rich unto all he's saying if you don't know how to ask you will continue to admire people and to hate people's breakthroughs and to hate their testimonies as though god isolated them and blessed them alone if you know how to ask the bible says you have not and you ask not then it says you ask and receive not because you ask amiss what we started correcting okay that he may consume it upon your lust we'll deal with it the patterns of prayer what does it mean to consume it upon your lust that means the ultimate scope of your desire is just to satisfy yourself there is nothing kingdom in it you will now understand the prayer of jesus thy kingdom come it is within the scope of the kingdom that he says give us our daily bread Give us our daily bread so that we'll be strong enough to continue making your kingdom come. Once you detach the kingdom, you also detach the possibility for your daily bread. Your daily bread is connected to your desire and your participation in making his kingdom come. This is what he's saying. Listen to my teaching for your glory. Where I teach that in this kingdom, God is not obliged to stand and partner with you on any matter that does not have a provision to give him glory our selfish world has mastered how to use the realm of the spirit to draw realities for our own personal desires why do you want a child why do you want the marriage why do you want the prosperity apostle i'm tired people have been looking down on me I'm, i want them to know that i'm not a nobody and God says that is the kind of nonsense prayer that will not be answered. Why won't it be answered? Because there is no provision for kingdom in it. Are we together now? Oh God, I want all my children to excel. Why? So that everybody will know that I'm not a small woman. And God says this is a joke. Not in my kingdom. It's not done that way. Lord, I want money to buy a new wrapper. Why? So that every woman in that church would know that me too, I'm not a, I'm not, you know, this and, and God looks at all these things and says, what do you think I am? An ATM uh, uh, machine? He's the Lord of all. But let him find your heart plugged towards his kingdom. Come. Father, I'm trusting you to give me twins. So that I can hurry up and have children and have the grace to serve you. God says, before you finish, twins are on their way coming. You will roast every devil on the way between the second heavens and that womb. And make sure those twins come. Let me tell you this. I have learned something about God. You want to see the speed of God in your life? Die to yourself and say, Lord, this is about you. It's all about you. Jesus, and all this is for you. It's for your glory and your fame. It's not about me. I said, You should do this my way. You alone are and I surrender. One more time. It's all about you. is one big secret in my life i submit to you you will see the hand of god in fearful ways when everything about your life becomes about him what name are you looking for for yourself if the name it is is just so that he will find expression then he will shake the heavens and the earth and give you that name wealth and prosperity there are many gullible people who love money oh god give me money why they mocked at me that day and lord this shame must live my life and god says this is not how i walk everything in my world is consistent with my purposes 
And if your life cannot find a bearing in my purposes, you see, let me tell you this. The, most of our prayer in church are lost, driven prayers. Let's tell ourselves the truth. What do I mean by lost, driven prayer? It is either the kind of prayer that was sponsored by a competitive spirit. I want to have this too. Lord, I want this anointing. The other day, I saw this guy prophesying as if I was not called into ministry. God, are you going to put this grace on me or just let me just go and look for a job? And God says, you hear what you are saying? Requests. You ask and you have not because you ask amiss. What is being amiss? So that you will satisfy yourself. I have cried this secret to the body of Christ again and again and I pray that this time around believers will get it. There is excellency in stepping out of the way and let God have his way. When you let God have his way, you will not be in the dark. Can God be in a place and his light not be on you? This mundane pursuit for fame this mundane pursuit for recognition, this mundane pursuit for this and that is why many people pray amiss. Someone sent me a text one day. I said, Ah, boss, you are enjoying. No, I said, You see the, the kind of talk this, I know what he meant to say because they see all these photos and see all these things and and. That statement is not a commendation. It is a derivative of lust. Did God send you to ministry just to enjoy? Is ministry a platform? Is, is it because of the clothes, the head? Oh, no. All those things are there because of Him and His purposes. Please hear me. If this is all you hear in the next two minutes to pray, if you leave this place tonight with this purified motif, that everything about me is for him. Get to that point in your life and watch God arise for you. That is the point where anybody who touches you touches the apple of his eyes. He will shake kingdoms for your sake. The kind of prayer that produces power. Why am I praying for more anointing? Father, greater power anointing greater revelation why why so that i will be a very senior man of god that people can see and acknowledge and god says not in my world in my dealings in my economy with men i will not walk that way are we together we are going to pray the prayer ministry is an advantage is one of the dominion systems of the saints. God has helped us to look at a few things. Part one. Next week we'll continue. And now begin to deal with the dynamics of effective prayer as intended by God. Not as intended by culture. Not as intended by religion. Hold someone's hand and let's pray in the spirit for just two, three minutes. Just pray. Outside, inside, pray.
Hallelujah. Just two prayer points. Number one, Father, purify my motive in prayer. Let the refiner's fire tonight purify my motive. Purify my motive. That I be not as the hypocrites. Purify my motive. May I be more interested in the contact of fellowship. In the transformation and growth that comes in prayer. Than the desire to be seen and to be known and accredited by men. Purify my motives. Purify my motives in prayer. That which drives me to pray. Purify my motives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are on a prayer series, and that means any attack on your prayer life, this is the series that should bring it under judgment. We will not wait till we finish. Right now. Are we together? You cannot be... Listen, every time God introduces a series, the grace to make the truth communicated and to make it effectual in your life is also present with the series. You are going to pray one prayer. Listen, be honest with yourself. If you know your prayer life has gone down, now is the time to cry to God and say, Lord, my life cannot continue like this. And if you have been praying at a level and you have refused to grow for many years, now is the time to shake off yourself and say, Lord, it's time to rise higher. Very deep dimensions of prayer. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I contact the grace in and through this series, the grace for prayer. Genuine, effectual, consistent Bible-based prayer. Every spiritual laziness, the inertia to pray, I challenge it in this series. It's time for my prayer life to wake up. My commitment to prayer, corporate prayer, personal prayer. One more minute. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please, let me just give us some instructions and then we'll pray. Between today and next Friday, when we'll be meeting, please find a day, just one day, a personal day. Wait upon the Lord personally. Please listen to the instruction. One day, complete. You are waiting upon the Lord, six to six. If it's our children, maybe six to two is okay. I don't expect any adults to wait upon the Lord 6 to 12. You are lazy. This is a series that is aimed at shaking up. Find a day. I know that there are people, individuals that fast, groups that fast, but find you at liberty between tomorrow up until Friday. Find a day when you are least distracted. You can have some time. Are we together? And then pray. Pray. Take out time to really pray in the Spirit. 
take out time. I don't expect you to pray at least in that day for anything less than a total combined at least three hours. At least. You are dedicated. Otherwise, your fast is useless. What were you fasting for? You are praying. Take out time. You will pray for other things, but you are just staying to pray for stamina in the spirit. You are praying to activate. Listen now. You are not praying for things. Leave the issue of things. This prayer is not for tea and bread. Leave all those ones. The purpose of this prayer is, oh God, whatever is blocking my organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit. Deadening my capacity to perceive. That in this prayer, this time of prayer, take it seriously. You, if you, you know, you can pray even as friends and this, provided you have time alone. And seriously pray. Get worship, saturate yourself, take some time. Please do it. Don't forget our family online. Try to find time. I know many of us are working, you have things to do, but discipline yourself. You will not die maximize night prayer i've taught you this thing i've shouted it again maximize night prayer wake up in the night suspend movies for this week you will not die suspend excessive browsing of internet um you know i'm not abusing your you can always watch whatever you are but just dedicate this time and get something that is serious are we together if you are watching, maybe you are watching a message or something, that's all right. But where you are now praying and then one drama, one play there, just suspend it. And give your destiny some serious attention. Take out time and pray. And while you are praying, be sensitive to the things the Holy Ghost is going to be saying. Be sensitive to the kinds of dreams you are going to be having. Be sensitive to the illumination that will come. This is destiny. You are praying and say, Lord, I've lost too many things in my life because I could not hear. I've lost too many things because I could not see. I don't want this to continue. I'm using this series to pray so that I know when good things are coming and know how to position myself. To know when evil things are coming and to know when to drive them back. You take out time and pray like that. And then you prepare yourself for Friday. I'll be sharing with you. Please invite anybody you know on Friday. Many people don't understand prayer. I will be sharing with you God's pattern, the dynamics of prayer. And what really happens in the realm of the spirit when the saints pray. What really happens? Father, we thank you. Thank you because you are teaching us how to pray. We want to stop shadow boxing. We want to stop assumptions. We want to pray the kind of prayer that produces results. And Lord, our hearts are opened in the name of Jesus. That even in this series, you will fire up our prayer lives. I'm praying for everyone under the sound of my voice whose prayer life has gone down. In the name of Jesus, fresh fire upon your prayer altar. Every excuse that justifies prayerlessness, I cancel it in this series. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever needs to be done in your life to give you room to pray. Some of you, you will need a room, a space for yourself. Some of you, you need God to just favor you so that you can have a place where you pray. Whatever needs to be done so that your prayer life will come back to life, I release my faith with you. In the name of Jesus, may it happen for you. For some of you, we need to cast out of your life the spirit of slumber. You have a problem with sleep. It doesn't matter whether you sleep early or you sleep late. The devil will take away precious moments in your life to pray. I command the spirit of slumber to live your life now. In the name of Jesus. And there are many of you who have precious dreams, visions, and prophetic experiences in prayer. But it has been hijacked by the spirit of error. So that you don't even know. You are not getting clarity again. You don't know when it is God. You don't know when it is an evil spirit. And sometimes God will show you precious things in dreams and visions. But you wake up and forget everything. There, there are instructions in those things. In the name of Jesus, I am praying for you now. Let there be a revival of retention. The grace that makes for spiritual retention. 
that when instructions come from heaven, you will wake up remembering them. You will not be like the king who forgot his dream. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for tonight. In the name of Jesus. Now, while standing, our time is gone. We are discussing prayer and matters of the spirit now. There are people here who are saying, Apostle, I really want to make things right with Jesus Christ. You're outside, you're in here, you came from far, and you're saying, my life has not been the way it is. I really want to hand over my life to Jesus and receive his life. Or you are here, you are saying, I need to just make things right with God. Please, if you belong to any of this category, whether you are inside or outside, we just have two minutes for you. I want you to leave your seat very boldly and come and stand right here. Let's celebrate them as they come. Very quickly. Koinonia is a place for encounter. Koinonia is a place for revival. Don't come here and go back the way you came. It's a place where you can come as you are because God is the maker of men. I believe there are still more people. If you are coming from outside, please hurry up and come. New dimension, a new season in my life. Hallelujah. Don't sit back and say, my friend will be ashamed of me or whatever it is. No, no. You must take your spiritual life very seriously. The Bible says, ye must be born again, not ye may be born again. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Just help this gentleman under the anointing. Now, for all of you who are here, I salute you. I know that many of you are making this decision for the very first time. And a number of you are rededicating your heart very genuinely. Um, please keep coming. I want you to lift your hands, your right hand, and say this sincerely, say this truthfully. Jesus is in this place, and I want you to mean every word that you are saying. Say, Lord Jesus. Say it again. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you, that you are the Son of God. Tonight, I have heard your word. I desire relationship, a rich relationship. Therefore, According to scripture, I confess that Jesus is my Savior, is my Lord, and my King. And I declare that I receive eternal life into my spirit. I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that I reign in life from today. I'm a child of God. I move forward ever and backward never. Amen. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. May the Lord preserve you. There is a supply of grace for you. You will go from glory to glory. You will go from grace to grace. The hand of God is mighty upon your life. The lines have fallen for you in pleasant places. And I declare that you have a goodly heritage. I plant in you an appetite for spiritual things. A hunger for the word. A hunger for the things of the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I appreciate and congratulate every one of you. Please, all of you, ladies and gentlemen, follow the gentleman waving his hands. All of you, as we clap for them, just follow the gentleman. And um, you will be received... And just appraised on a few things, and then you'll be back to your seat. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We believe you were mightily blessed. To connect with the ministry and get more from Apostle Joshua Selman, follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Koinonia ENI. To stream Koinonia Live, go to mixler.com forward slash Koinonia and download the teachings on coinonersermons.org For questions and inquiries, call 0814-721-4444 or 0907 we love and celebrate